Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So here we'll be doing a complete walkthrough of the Maths Paper 3 and this is from the Key Stage 2 2018 SAS, i.e. the National Curriculum Test. So for you guys who've seen my previous videos, well, then you know what to expect. I'll be going through every question step by step. For you guys new out there, please check out my other videos and um, leave a comment, a like, and definitely share with your friends and of course subscribe because I've got a bunch of other videos. I've got loads of uh, practice math questions and I've also got um, some English papers which I've worked on and may include science from the near future. But yeah, without further ado, let's go. So as usual, you cannot use any calculator for any type of test for Key Stage 2 Maths. Um, you've got 40 minutes to answer and every answer, at least your final answer, must be in a white box. You can show you're working out into these um, squares here. Or, you know, to be honest, I do outside the box. But for the exam, please do inside the, the pink box here. Anyway, my marks are given and that's fine. But otherwise, let's start with question one. Okay, so the numbers in the sequence increase by the same amount each time. So they tell you they increase by the same amount. So, it's, so it could be plus something every time. So write down the missing numbers. So you can see you got 42 and 49. So this seems to have gone up by plus seven. So this means, and because we know increase by the same amount, i.e. plus seven, we can just add seven across. So 49 add seven will give us 56, and then 63 add seven will give us 70. You realize that this is literally the seven times table, guys. So if you can, if you already spotted that, so you give yourself a pat on the back and just write two already. <laughs> but anyway, for the first box here, um, you gotta go back seven as well. So this would be 35. Okay, number two. So Adam chooses the colors for a new team shirt. Okay, the shirt has two colors. So, so far it looks white and gray. <laughs> I don't know any football clubs like that. There are four colors to choose from. Yellow, blue, white, or red. So let's keep this in mind. The shirts could be yellow and blue, yellow and white, yellow and red, blue and white. So it wants us to write two missing combinations. So just think what is missing. So they start with yellow, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, white, yellow, red. So yellows are done. Blue and white, they've also can do blue and red. So let's write blue and red. And then you ask yourself, only one color is missing, so you move on to red. So what else do we have in red? They did, we've already seen red and yellow, red and blue. There must be then red and white. So put white over here. So that's it, combinations. Okay, number three. Here are four number cards, two, three, four, and seven. So Layla uses each card once to make a four digit number. Okay, so before we start, always label this as units, tens, hundreds, and thousands, but well, I'm sure you guys already know that. So she places four into the tens column. So four in the tens column would mean over here. Two, she places the number two so that it has a high value than any of the other digits. So that so the highest value two could be in the thousands column. So it's still here. And she placed the remaining two digits so that seven has the higher value. So if seven has a higher value of the two box, it has to be the hundreds, meaning the final digit is going to be three. So actually, she didn't really do much. She just swapped the three and the seven round. Okay, number four, guys. So write the three missing digits to make this addition correct. Oh, okay, I love this. So we always start from the right side, yeah? Always starts from the units and then move across that way. So first things first, nine plus something is gonna give us a six. So the only thing I can think of is to make nine plus something give us 16, so carry the one across. So nine plus seven will give us 16, carry the one. Now one plus something plus two will give us seven. So one plus two is three. If you add four more, you'll get seven. And of course, no remainders. Next is two add four is six, so that checks out. Three plus seven is, is 10, so it's zero, and you got one, so that'll give us 10. And then one plus five will give us six. So that is our final answer. Okay, five. So, so far it's been easy. Tick the numbers that are common factors of both 12 and 18. So what this means is that both, uh, any numbers below 12 and 18 should be divisible by 12 and 18. So for example, if you look at them, they're both even numbers. So they both are in the two times table. So we take two. They're also both in the three times table. They both appear in the six times table. Only 18 appears in the 9, so it doesn't count. And only 12 appears in well, the 12s. So it should be the first three boxes. Question 6. 
This chart shows the number of different types of big cat in the zoos. Oh, big cats. So there are 20 big cats in the zoo together. And what do we have? We got, che we got cheetahs, tigers, jaguars, and lions. So just looking this head on, we can see that in a pie chart, cheetah seems to represent one quarter because you can see it's a right angle and this looks like a perfect quarter. Whereas tiger represents the majority, jaguar is less than a quarter and lion is also less than a quarter. We don't know how much, maybe a fifth. Who knows? So here are some statements about the chart. Take the statements that are true. So looking over here, it says there are more cheetahs than jaguars. Well, let's see. Yep, I'll guess so, because one quarter of cheetahs is five, and to be honest, this has a bigger share than that, so yep, I give, I give that a tick. The total number of lions and tigers is 10. So how do we know that? So tigers plus lion. Well, if you want to get 10 the pie chart, so it should be a lion cutting straight through the middle so if, if the line was a bit like this, then these two combined will make 10. But actually there is a bit more, maybe 11 or 12. So this is false. One quarter of the big cats are cheetahs. Yep, we saw that. There are more than five jaguars. Mm, no, the reason why is because five represents one quarter of 20. So if you're at one quarter of 20, you should get five. And that's how many cheetahs there are. So jaguars looks like a bit less. My money is on four probably and tiger well we're not too sure so we can say no that's it guys that's literally all you do so let's move on to seven okay so a farmer's packing eggs each box holds six eggs okay now the farmer has 980 eggs to pack so that's quite a bit how many boxes can the farmer fill using 980 eggs so if one box has six eggs how many boxes can you fill? Well, we just do 6 into 980. Now, you could do this short, wise, short division wise or long. I'm just going to do short because it's faster. So, the first things first, how many 6 is going to 9? Well, it fits in once and has a remainder of 3. Now, how many 6s fit into 38? Well, we know that 6 times 6 is 36. So, it goes in 6 times, remainder 2. And finally, how many 6s go into 20? Well, we also know here that we have uh, let's see, um, three sixes make 18, so that's three, but we also got a remainder two. So actually, over here we can see that how many boxes can a farmer fill using 980 eggs? Well, out of the full boxes, he can fit 163 um, boxes full of six eggs. But then, how many eggs will be left over? Well, we have a remainder of two. Now, this question could be asked both ways. They could tell you how many boxes do you need and not necessarily full boxes. If the question were just regular boxes, you'll realize that you need 163 boxes plus an extra box to put the two eggs. So it would have been 164 boxes. That's only if there was no uh, full boxes required. Anyway, that's it. So let's move on to eight. Okay, so Jack has 400 pound. He spends 35% of his money on the new bike. So... 35% firstly, let's just do the mass of 400. A trick to this is to always work out 10%. We know 10% of 400, you just divide it by 10, is 40. And then you can see that you need another 25%. And 25%, guys, you need to recognize is a quarter. So a quarter of 400 is um, 100. And then to make 35%, you just add them up. So you get 40 plus 100, that's 140. So that means Jack spends 140 quid. Not bad, not bad for a bike. Now, nine, okay? So the Angel of the North is a large statue in England. So I've never actually personally seen this guys, but I heard this, it looks pretty nice. It is 20 meters tall and 54 meters wide. Okay, so that's the dimensions. Now Ali makes the scale of the Angel of the North. Her model is 40 centimeters tall. Now, scale is something you write on paper. So we say that she did this on a paper that for the height of 40 centimeters, that seems to be kind of equal to 20 meters in real life. So you can kind of see that for every meter is doubled. Okay, so we can say that for every one meter, if you divide by 20, it's like two centimeters in real life. Uh, two centimeters on paper, it's like one meter in real life. So how wide is a model? according to uh, paper. So since we know it's 54 meters in real life, you can just see if you times this by 54, two times 54 give us 
108 centimeters. So on a paper, that's how it looks. 108 centimeters on paper and 54 meters in real life. Okay, next. <clears throat> so number 10. So Layla draws a square on this coordinate grid. Okay, square. Three of the vertices are marked. What are the coordinates of the missing vertex? Now, a square, of course, have equal lengths. Okay, so the problem here is I'm using... Uh, I'm, in this question, you must always use a ruler, guys. Yeah? So make sure you get your fully equipped with ruler on the exam day. I'm just going to go ahead and sketch it to how it should be anyway. But to have a look carefully, this is at 5, 1, and this is at... Uh, five. This is at 1, 5, and 5, 1. So all you do is literally just try and get a ruler and just carefully... Make sure you cross the, the lines over here. So it's, it's also good to label it as well, the coordinates. It helps a lot. Okay, and, and if you move from here to here, you're going to go through the same width. So it looks to me that they're going four boxes down. So let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's always four down and four cross. So it's going to be the same here. It's going to go four down and four cross. Meaning, if it's going to be on the other side, if we look carefully, we can see that's four cross. So it's going to be four an additional four to the left. So it'll be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this has this must be the last vertex. Vertex. And then you just connect it across. And there you go, perfect square. Ish. <laughs> but yeah, guys, make sure you do it with a ruler. Yeah? Don't never never do it freehand because you could actually get penalized and lose a mark. Anyway, let's move on to the next bit. So yeah, so what is the coordinates of the vertex? So we can see it's, it's minus three across, so it's three to the left and one up. So minus three and one. Let's put it down. Okay, next, 11. So Stefan has 600 milliliters of water in a bottle. He pours some of the water into two measuring jugs as shown. So he has 600, he poured some into here, so he poured between 100 and 200, so that's 150 over here. But then he poured somewhere between, and again, this is 150 here. But then it's somewhere between 150 and 200. So the number halfway between is 175. If you guys are not sure how to calculate numbers halfway, a little trick is to always add the two numbers. So 150 plus 200 is 350, and then half it. If you half it, you'll get exactly 175. So that's that's useful for really hard numbers to half. Now, so okay, so that's great. So he's put 150 here and 175 here. So all together, he's poured, if you add these, these two numbers up, about 325 milliliters he's poured. Now, how many milliliters are, of water are left in the bottle? So he's poured this many, so subtract it from 600. So 600 minus 325. Uh, you can do it fast mentally. You can firstly subtract 300, so you've got 300 left. Subtract another 25 and you're left with uh, 275 milliliters. Always try and subtract fast. Try not to just really do the subtraction method. There's always shortcuts to do everything, guys. Question 12. So this table shows the areas of the United Kingdom and Jamaica. So we've got the countries here, both of them, and the area in square kilometers. So you can see that United Kingdom is massive well, compared to Jamaica. You're not sure how many times bigger, you can always just divide them. So it'll be 240,000 over 10,000. You can just cross out the zeros. And 240 over divided by 10 is 24. So that's nine times bigger. Now, okay, all right, I guess we answered the question then. So it's 24. So yeah, I didn't really mean to do that, but it just, sometimes when you look at figures, it becomes quite, quite obvious. But anyway, guys, let's move to 13. So a box contains 2.6 kg of washing powder. Now, Jack uses 65 grams of powder for each wash. And no, you got 2.6 kilograms. So that's actually the same as 2,600 grams. If you're not sure how to convert from kg to grams, just think of um, K standing for 1,000. So it'll be 2.6 times 1,000. Just work that out mentally in your head and you should get the same result. Okay, otherwise it's good to know that 2 kg is 2,000 and 0.6 is 600. Anyway, back to the question. So yeah, he uses 65 grams of powder for each wash. He uses all the powder. So how many washes did Jack do? So once again, it's one of those cases where you got divided by 65. So 2,600 divided by 65. Now, you could do this. The only problem is, is that working this out is kind of long. What I would personally do is try and do a little maths trick, yeah? 
So just count in 65 for a second. If you count, if you double 65, you get 130. Okay, and if you, if you double this again, you get 260. Now have a look. So this is, so remember, so recall, 260 is actually 4 times 65, yeah? 4 of 65. And you notice that 2600 and 260 is just 10 times bigger. So if you times this by 10 now, you're going to have 40 lots of 65s. So that means you need 40 washes because 40 times 65 is 2,600. Yeah, so this is just a quick way, guys, yeah? I mean, you could actually divide it using long division or short division, but it's good to try and spot maths tricks. Anyway, let's move on to the next bit, 14. Okay, Ooh, yeah, so this is one of those um, written explanation ones. So two of the angles in a triangle are 70 and 40 degrees. So Jack says, the triangle is equilateral. What? Come on, Jack. You're in year six. and you believe that? So explain why Jack is not correct. So we know what one equilateral triangle is, guys, right? It's, an, it's a triangle that has the same angle at has the same angle at every corner. So let's say this was a triangle, a badly drawn. So it's 60, 60, and 60. This is what equilateral triangle is. So Jack is not correct because all the angles must be 60 degrees. So all angles in an equilateral triangle must be 60 degrees each. Okay. Question 15. A short prince designs on t-shirts which look strikingly but not really familiar to pyramids based in Giza because it looks like a pyramid from head, up, head down, bird's eye view. So they use this formula to work out the price for printing a design. Now the price of the t-shirt is 60 pence times the number of colors used. Okay. And then the plus an additional one pounds twenty five, probably for delivery or just getting the t shirt itself. So what is the price of for printing a design that has three colors? Well, since you've got three colors, it'll be in this case sixty pence times three. So three loss of sixty is one eighty. So it'll be one pound eighty plus one pound twenty five, and that gives us a grand total of about three pounds and uh, five pence. Okay. Easy stuff. So just add them. If you're not sure how to add decimals, just line them up like 180 plus 125, as if they were hundreds. Okay, so now Amina has only five pounds to spend in printing a design. Okay, so remember this was the number of colors times 60 plus 125 would be the price of it. So since it's five pound, this means you're gonna get a fixed number of colors. Okay, so what is the greatest number of colors you can have in the design? So let's kind of think of it as an equation, yeah. Let's work in pennies because there's a lot of uh, decimals involved. So instead of five pounds, we're going to say that she, she can spend so far 60p times number of colors. So let's say 60p times the number of colors plus uh, 1.25 or 125p has to be equal to 500 pence. So this is the equation. To make your life easy, because we're always going to pay 1.25 in the end, let's just ignore the 125, make it 125p less. So this means instead of five pound, it'll go down to 375p. Now the question is, how many 60s will fit into 375p? Well, you can see that um, if we just go and count in our 60 times table, or better yet, sixes, will be six, 12, 18, so just add zeros by the way to make it 60s, uh, 24, 30, 36, and so on. You will notice that actually, um, after this number, you get 420. This is when the limit occurs. So basically, you can say that you have basically you can say that sixty goes into three hundred seventy-five exactly one, two, three, four, five, six times with some remainder. And that's it. That's literally the greatest number of colors she can have in a design. Okay, number sixteen now. So a book has two hundred and seventy-six pages. Amina has read one third of the book. How many pages are left for Amina to read? So if she's read one third. That means there are now two thirds left of, of the book. And we know the book has 276 pages. So that's the question we need to solve is this. Now, the quick way to find fractions is to always find one third and then times it by how many thirds you need. So to find one third of 276, just divide that by three. And this is just easy. So let's have a look. How many threes go into two? Well, we can't. How many threes go into 27 then? Well, we know it goes nine times with no remainder. Uh, how many threes going to fit into six? Well, twice. And because you want two thirds, let's double it. So double ninety-two. Well, double ninety is one eighty, and double two is four. So it's hundred and eighty-four. Easy. Okay. Question seven now. 
On a dice, the sum of the dots on opposite faces is always 7. Okay, so this means if it's 4 on the top, then when it's on the ground, facing the bottom, facing the ground is 3. Okay, so draw dots on the 3 empty faces of the net. So the net is literally the face if you open it up, and it would look like this. So we just have to pretty much fill out the 3 blanks with the right dots. So think of it this way. Let's, let's consider making this one the, the ground, yeah? So this is now facing the ground. So this is facing the floor. This means if you lift this part up, this, this number 4 will lift up. So this would be a 4 here. So if you lift this one up, it must be a 3. We can immediately do 3 across here. So this is the wings of the, of the ground. So we're at the moment we're here. So here's the base, yeah? Now, if we lift this part up, this is going to correspond. So this is going to be another wing, but this time the front wing. We need a back wind, and the only way to get back is to shift this one to across the six, so the six will appear here. So this means if this is six, then this must be a one. So now you could just realize what the final one is. We've got one here, we've got a two, we've got a three, we've got a four. So the only thing remaining is a five. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. So 18. Now, this is a diagram of a vegetable garden, okay? It shows the fractions of the garden planted with potatoes and cabbages. Oof, love, veg love vegetable gardens. So apparently, in this garden, we can see that two-thirds are potatoes, a quarter is cabbages, and the rest are carrots. Now, what fraction of the garden is carrots? This is actually quite easy. In general, when it comes to fractions, we need to realize that when you add up all fractions, it must add up to make a whole fraction, a whole one. So let's go ahead and add two thirds and one quarter, yeah? So we can say that two thirds plus one quarter, well actually, to work this out, we need to have common denominators because you can't actually add this. So the only way you can make them the same is if you if you both um, raise them up to the same denominator. So let's have a look. If you go threes and fours, they both appear in, the tw in um, 12. So you can see that the only way to make a common denominator if they were both over 12. And to get the first fraction over 12, we need to multiply up and down by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. Because 2 thirds is the same as 8 twelfths. And vice versa. To get 4 to 12, we need to multiply this second fraction by 3. So 1 quarter up and down times 3 is 3 twelfths. And, that, and that's it. So 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is going to give us 11 twelfths. So that is the value of everything but the carrots. So 11 twelfths make up potatoes and cabbages. Then carrots must be the remainder, which is... 112. Okay, not bad as well. So, next one. Okay, question 19. So, 33,630 equals 354 times 95. So, they give us a multiplication fact, and you can see it below. It's all combinations. So, use the fact to complete the calculations below. Now, the answers are always going to be based on one of these three numbers, yeah? Either with or without decimals or with extra zeros. So, let's measure it. So we've got 354, so that matches this one, and we've got 9.5, which is one decimal short of 95. So if it's one decimal short, then the answer must be one decimal short. So it should be 3363.0, but we don't need to write 0. So that's the answer, 3363. For the next bit, you can see that they've raised this uh, 354 by 10, so it's they've got an extra zero, so you can times the final result by 10, whereas 95 is the same. So that means the answer must have an extra zero. So it'd be 33630 with an extra zero. Okay. Now last one, we got 3363 divided by 95. So it seems to me that we have the left side now. If you divide it by 95, you'll get some combination of 354. Well, here's a tip. So you can see that this one's reduced by one decimal because you they knocked out zero, so they moved it by one decimal. So one digit short. This means that this should be also one digit short, technically, or one decimal short. So instead of 354, it'll be 35.4. So one digit short. Okay, that's it. Now 20. So in March, Ken collects two, three, or four eggs each day from his hands. Now in the first 20 days, Ken collects 57 eggs all together. All right. Now there are 31 days in March. Now, what is the greatest number X can collect in March? Okay, interesting question. So, let's have a look. So, in the first 20 days, he's already got 57. So, this means that there's 11 days left to somehow make the greatest number of X. Now, 
it's quite easy if you've got 11 days left and you can collect either two three or four the maximum you can get is well if you've got four every single day so four times 11 so all together you could have 57 plus four times 11 which is 44 and this would give us if you added this correctly 101 x that's really it well that's two marks oh not bad now here we go guys the final question 21 so jack finished a sponsored run in 53 minutes and 25 seconds now ali finished three minutes and 50 seconds after jack so how long did ali take so you just have to add well three minutes and 50 seconds so this is almost if you round this up carefully you get four minutes but 10 seconds shorter so this is the same as four minutes minus 10 seconds so how about we just go ahead and um, add four minutes to this time so you get 57 minutes and 25 seconds minus 10 you're gonna get 15 seconds so 57 minutes and 15 seconds now Layla finished the run in eight minutes and 45 seconds before Jack how long did Layla take so this one again you're gonna sub firstly subtract eight minutes from 53 so for this one it's best we do a number line actually let's go ahead and do a number line so we start at 53 and we're gonna subtract firstly eight minutes yeah so 53 take away eight come on calculation you should get 45 so at the moment he's done 45 minutes and 25 seconds now you need to subtract 45 seconds okay so first you subtract 25 you'll be on um if you subtract 25 seconds first you'll be on exactly 45 minutes and subtract an extra 20 seconds so that makes 45 seconds short so 20 seconds minus 45 minutes so go, will give us 44 minutes and 40 seconds done anyway guys i hope this helped and um you know if you guys enjoyed this video give me a like share with your friends and if you guys came all the way you know give yourself a pat on the back because you guys were amazing anyways have a lovely day and um good luck with your revision take care guys